I always laugh when that happens. So hi, everybody. Welcome to Life Between Lives, um, a beautiful conversation and introduction to you are a, an infinite being. And for about 15 to 20 years now, yes, yeah, about that long, I've been offering um, Life Between Life regression sessions to people. And where I'd like to begin today is really to invite you to the possibility of going beyond everything that you have been taught about um, being a soul, about energy, about a physical body, about lessons that you've got to learn in life, all of those things. Now, just for these next 45 minutes to kind of put that to one side and allow yourself to be here present with me as we have a conversation that is really, really different to anything that anybody has ever been able to invite you to, anything that anyone has ever been able to um, chat with you about, and probably something that you know more than you've been willing to acknowledge or even give yourself credit for knowing. So there are lots of different ways to discover about yourself, to discover things about yourself. Um, a lot of us are seeking, that's why we're here, that's how we get to be um, on these seminars. This is why we choose to go on seminars like this and we're constantly trying to figure out what it is that we either supposed to be doing, um, maybe we're looking for some answers, um, perhaps you searching for um, the puzzle pieces that are going to kind of fit it all together for you so you can see the full picture that you know is possible. Uh, and when I talk about knowing what is possible, you as a person with everything that you know and just to add to that, what you know is not only what someone has taught you physically in this life. You have a sense of knowing beyond this reality, beyond this physical life, beyond this physical body that you have. So when we start going into the conversation about your life between lives, we're actually looking at what is it that you be between the lives when you are looking at what you would like to choose next. Asking questions about the life that you've just had. Asking questions about what will contribute to you even greater to have even more awareness. So during these Life Between Life sessions, we actually do an amazing regression all the way back to when you're in the womb, before you're born, and we ask some questions around that, and we go even further back. Keep We keep going back um, through a couple of lifetimes where I then facilitate that space for you, where you're able to remember that information. And I'm sometimes really aware that when I say that word remember, sometimes people get um, a little afraid of that. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to remember all the bad stuff. The interesting thing, it's never that. It's never, ever the bad stuff. Purely from that place of nothing is ever bad and everything is always just a choice. So as you discover this infinite being self of you, so you become more and more aware of what is possibly limiting you in your current life right now. So just imagine for a moment not having this body, this body that you have, that you've chosen right now. Imagine you are pure energy. What else could be possible for you? being just that, being energy. And then 
looking at what is possible with the body you've chosen right now in this world, in this life, at this current time. So it's really a, this beautiful exploration of where you've been, where you go in between your lives, and looking at what else is possible for you and I can hear your heads you want me to say for the future and it's actually even more than that so ultimately every single choice you make every single day creates your future so without going too in depth into um, the subject when we decide that we only have this one purpose in life and that's to heal the world. Let me give that as just one simple example. If you only have that, what if, what if there's actually something else that you are that you haven't acknowledged yet? This Life Between Life session, the information um, and really the energy that it is the energy that it contributes. Because ultimately, any experience that you have that's a recollection of being in between lives, of being in the womb, of being in a different life, um, of moving into, moving higher and higher and higher away from the earth, that information is what stays with you. And it's like receiving this massive download of, what you've always known and now it begins to activate more in, in your life. So you get this greater sense of space, this sense of ease and the sense of peace. I've had people come out of a session and go, wow, you know, this part of the session, if, if we had stopped there, I would have had received everything that I was looking for. And the one particular lady that came to see me, there is a moment in a session where, um, where you go past a scene when you're moving from one life into the in-between lives. And as she was moving, she was like talking, you know, giving me the information. And then at the end of the session, because when we're in the session, we're still having a conversation. So you are, the person is really, really relaxed. Um, there's none of the normal thoughts running through your head. And at the end of the session, she was, she said to me, when I left that body and I was moving and I could really get that sense of being moving up and being space and being spacious and light and alive without a body. And she really explained this space that she could perceive and five years later, she messaged me to say that session, having that space, just really knowing that that is what I am, that sense of space, that sense of ease and peace and aliveness contributed so much to her in her life. In the five, from the time we did the session to five years when she, you know, reconnected with me and, and told me about her amazing, um, how that one day contributed to her so much. So when we talk about going in between lives, we actually start looking at not defining anything about the past that we have decided is so, so, so significant. We are actually looking at, wow, those have been really interesting choices that I've made. And sometimes we'll go to one life, sometimes we'll go to two, sometimes three. It's very different for each person. Um, it's neither right nor wrong how many lives we go to. The ultimate experience, the ultimate, say, direction we're looking for in a session like this is for you to receive that sense of this is me as an infinite being. This is truly who I be. And with that knowing, with that awareness, with the energy of that and how that then contributes to your everyday life and how you create your life. So before I started working with this energy and, and facilitating sessions for people, I had 
made past lives super significant. I had recalled a number of my own past lives where I had been different types of cultures, living in different types of countries, being different male, masculine and feminine. And I'd made those things so, so, so significant that at that time of my life, I was constantly trying to find how to be those things again, how to you know, re-engage with the energy and the things I, I did in those lifetimes. And if something came along and I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's very similar to what I was in my past life, I'd make that significant and then try and, you know, re-engage with it and um, try and, you know, add it into my life even more. But it didn't work because I then felt really, really stuck. So I started searching for what else is possible? What else is there for me to discover about this being of myself that I know is is around that I know is there that I know is with me all the time and it got me to see that there is this physical life that your body is really really important to this physical life and that having this awareness of your infinite being self really contributes to how aware you are and how you make your choices from your day-to-day -day choices with this awareness of being um, an infinite being. So I'd like to ask you guys, what questions do you have for me? Because I can just talk and talk and talk. Um, and right now, I'd really love to know what are your questions. Um, so please open your, your Zoom or write the question in the chat and I will answer them as best as I can. What questions do you have and what would you like to know? What can I contribute to you today? <laughs> Is anyone out there? No questions. Well, then I guess my job is done. <laughs> okay, you're just thinking of one. <laughs> Awesome. If you could ask me anything about past lives and in between lives, what would you ask? Um, what is it that you've always wanted to know that you've never considered asking? And if you're shy, you can also send it to me privately. If you don't want anyone else to see your question, you can send it to me privately. No one will ever know that it was you. And I will address the question without saying your name. You know how to do that, right? You go on to the chat, you click two, and you just find my name and um, you click that and then you write your message and I will get your message. You'll see, you know, this conversation is a contribution by your contribution to me. <laughs> I, indeed I have, Stefan, yes. Okay, so that's a great question, Tracy. Yes, so when we look at, um, Chase is asking about soul families. The beautiful thing, as we all know, and you know that it, it you know, it's not something that I, I believe is, is um, there's so much information available at the moment that we all know that we choose our family. We all know that we choose the life. We all know that um, we choose this life. The difference is that there are many, um, there are many thought processes out there that say that you have are here in this life to learn something, to overcome something. So what I know, guys, is that's not true. Okay. That is not true. You're not here to overcome something. You're not here to learn lessons. You are here to live the greatest life you possibly can. And yes, some of us do choose to actually bring whatever we chose in our past life with us. And we choose to then look at it again in this life and we recreate it over and over again. The gift of this kind of session and the gift of what is available to you from here is to know that you have a choice and you can change it at any given moment. 
you can make a choice to change the direction of your life that then enhances and acknowledges your infinite being self. Because we, we, and I know I'm going off, to, off topic here, but we really, what we often do is we separate our body with our true infinite being self. What if the two together create a life? And it's got nothing to do with being spiritual. It's got to do with acknowledging that you are an infinite being. Acknowledging that you have the capacity to know, be, perceive, and receive anything and everything you ask for. And that is the difference between being you and creating your life and following something that's one-dimensional, that has one direction, that has a whole set of rules, that has you believing that you are not powerful enough just as you, that you have to look for something outside of you to give you the power that you are looking for, to give you the, the um, creative flow for you to engage with and create what it is that you would really like to see your life as. When it comes to family, we do choose our family. And each person, again, is so, so, so unique. Most of us choose families. And if you're on this call and you are searching, most of us choose our families because we know that those are the families that will never be able to stop us, especially our parents. Uh, we choose our parents because we know that they will never be able to stop us, no matter how hard they try, no matter how much, how different they are. There's somewhere along the line you will find that you are able to actually keep going, no matter what anybody else says or does from a family perspective. So when you choose family, sometimes some of those people in your family were in your past lives as brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, um, lovers, partners, friends, whatever. There are different things. And during the session, we do find out um, some information about that. And it gets to be this amazing gift of, oh, wow, that is so cool. That is what that connection is. And one of the greatest gifts that I found um, in a lot of these sessions is that a lot of us choose our partners because we have this, oh, I feel connected to this person. Yet it's not that love connection and we make it that love eternal, you know, um, connection when in fact it's just because you know that person energetically from another life, energetically from between lives not sometimes not even from another life you just know that person energetically from between lives so there's a sense of familiarity there and then what we tend to do is we expand on it as we do because you know we all want that love you know thing <laughs> and we expand on that and we begin this relationship and a couple of months down the line we go oh my gosh this actually isn't working because the chemistry what requires to create a great relationship wasn't there in the beginning it was the connection from another life or from in between lives where you as an energy being as an infinite being um had that sense of oh this person i know this person from somewhere and i'm sure some of you guys even maybe in your youth um you know when you were dating people or, or um, looking for someone to be in partnership with um, and those things don't work out. Not that they're all bad. Some of them turn out all amazing. Um, and it's just really this amazing exploration of who, who, who you be in the world. It's going even beyond I am this. It's going beyond who you be in this world energetically as an infinite being with this body and what is possible for you that you haven't considered before and what can contribute to you creating the life that you know is possible that you haven't been able to even touch the surface with because you have all of these preconceived ideas of what a, what life is supposed to look like based on this realities rules and regulations and form and structure and things that this reality makes so significant that you judge yourself for all the time and when you get to get that sense of being in between lives being infinite being this beautiful amazing 
light, energetic being, how that contributes to your life. And some things just don't matter anymore. And you can then take that leap into um, a different life, into creating a different life, shall I say, and um, being more aware. Because ultimately, it's empowering you to know more about being you that creates your future. When you know, truly, truly know you, nothing can stop you. Nothing is hard. Nothing is difficult. There are only, like, there's, you begin to get a lot more choices. I hope you can see that from, from, from that, where you can actually get to see a lot more choices. So, um, positive past lives, and it feels like they are all merging. Is there a reason for this, or simply? Yeah, so... So we, oh, that's a great question, Owen. Thank you for that. Yes. So that sense of merging, okay? What if it's not the lives merging? It's more you becoming more aware of your infinite self. Your infinite self. So as an infinite being, you can tap into all your lives. You don't have to relive them. You can kind of, oh, like go ask. Okay, so... How do I know this and what else do I know that can take me to the next step to what I would like to have in my life? And when you are in that moment and, and you're possibly asking a lot of questions right now, and so it's like, what if everything that you're aware of from the past, what if it's not that it's in the past, it's that it's in your awareness. It's what you now know. It's there and it's available. This information is available to you. So it may seem like it's all merging, but what if it's you actually, every choice you're making on this physical journey now, you're becoming more and more aware of your infinite self. So I hope that um, if, if, if that seems true for you, if that seems light for you, just let me know. Um, and that is a great question. Yeah, why do some children remember past lives? That's also a great question. Some children remember past lives. They, they just do. They haven't filtered it out. They haven't made a choice. And you'll find a lot of kids um, coming into the world right now. And I know we've been saying that for years and years and years and years. But now more than ever, children are, are far more aware. Far, far more aware. Um, I see kids five, seven, 10, 15, all of those ages, yes, even teenagers, are so much more aware of other people's thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and of what's possible. That's why a lot of the, a lot of kids, I'm saying this is a very big statement, a lot of kids these days are super frustrated, and maybe, maybe and, and act out, it's just that they know that they can actually do and be more, but everywhere in their life, um, People are showing them that that's not possible because they're either labeled as being too young, you know, when you're two and you know everything. Can there be people in your life that actually support you to allow you to be everything that you know that's possible? It's, it's not available here. So children remember because they haven't filtered it out. It's so present with them. They haven't been judged for not knowing and, they, you know, if you look at it, um, I mean, I'm, what, 50, 51 now. It, when I was a kid, when I was four years old, there was a way kids were brought up. Now, children are brought up with so much available to them, so much information. So it's almost you're born and you, you're required to have this information. And it's so available. So they're downloading from everyone all the time information. Thanks, Owen. Yes. Great. Does that give you some insight, Lucinda? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any more questions? Hmm. You like 
past lives. Sorry, can you ask that in a different way? What do you mean? You like past lives as a subject? Don't you have a question? Oh, is that to everyone? Um, if you gave um, advice to someone interested in becoming a past life regressionist, what would that be? Well, I mean, I go beyond past life. So we're not uh, talking about past lives here, particularly I'm talking about life between lives. So past lives is one element of it. Um, going in between lives is going beyond the body. Actually going beyond when you are a being without a body and what it is that you do and be in the spirit world. What do you create there? What do you look at? What do you see? What are you aware of? That is where we go. So it requires that you um, be, be a, um, oh, my brain is gone, my brain is fried. You need to be a, have a hypnotherapy license to be able to do this kind of work. Um, it's currently only taught by Michael Newton. So it's a very advanced type of um, process. I know there's a lot of people out there that do past life, past life regression. Um, a lot of people do past life readings. It's not, not ultimately the same as they're reading your information. They're reading and looking at what you what, what they decide or they pick up is, is your um, past life. What I do is different. You, I'm asking you questions when you're relaxed and you are giving me the information. So you're the one having the true real experience, um, giving me that information and we're recording it so you take it home with you. It is such a beautiful, beautiful um, experience. I don't advertise these. I don't offer them um, on, I don't, you know, market it at all. This is the first time in years that I've actually um, done a talk about this because it's so special to me. It's not just a quick little, you know, 15 minute session. It's a four hour session. And um, you get to do some exercises before and um, some self-hypnosis before and get to play with some of the questions before you come for a session. And then um, it's just you and me and your questions and where we can go for the session. And it's truly, truly amazing. So to do this, to do past life work, and if you're choosing someone to go and have past life regression with, ask a lot of questions, you know. What is it, you know, how are they, how are they doing the session? How long have they been doing it? What kind of um, process are they using to relax you? What is, what is available from this person and follow your knowing, follow your knowing when, when you're choosing to, um, to learn more about your past lives. And the interesting thing is if you ask, you know, about your past life, you might find that there are many things you already know about past life. You already know what you've been before. You already know what you've chosen to be before. Um, and some of them may, you know, may come up in um, your life as things that you just love or things that you're interested in. Uh, it's really quite interesting when you start to, to play with that, you know, and use it as a contribution. So um, I see so many people when they do find me and come to me for these sessions, they had been told that they were something in the past life and they've kind of been stuck there. And haven't been able to move forward from that because they've made it so significant in their life and then when we go through the session and we get to ask questions about that moment or about what it was that they you know we experienced as a past life um, we get to see more and have more insight into what that is all about ultimately anything that you choose to discover more about who you be ask questions always will this be a contribution to me to my body to my life to my business to my family to my living and what future will it create for the world knowing this information or having this session I know that you know 
everything that you choose that is also a contribution to the world, a contribution to what can be created on the planet. If that is light and that has a lot of space to it, choose it and go for that because then you know that something wonderful is available for you in that choice. Really different. Owen, then you go about your day every day life and someone shares a message stating that you live before in another time. Go about your everyday life and someone shares a message stating. So are you saying that, you know, someone just in passing shares a message to you? Are you asking that, um, are you saying that someone said, just said that? Someone who does readings. Okay, so your question, okay, so um, if someone says that to you and you haven't asked for that information, okay, that's also something to look at, you know. Um, personally, I don't go around giving people information they haven't asked for. <laughs> Ultimately, it's really if you've asked a question and you're wanting to receive information, then any information that's given to you, always ask, is this true for me? Always, always ask, is this true? And um, some questions you can use to play with that is um, the, the four questions to discover anything, no matter what is going on, even if it's something in your current life, is what is this? What can I do with it? Okay, what is this? What can I do with it? So always ask, is this true for me? And if it's if it's really heavy, um, these are some of the access consciousness tools. So if it's really heavy for you, then it's not true for you. So light and heavy, the light and heavy tool is if it's light, it's true. If it's heavy, it's a lie, okay? So if someone tells you something, and it feels super heavy, always ask, is this true for me? It doesn't make them wrong or you right or them right and you wrong. It's just to give you the awareness of that, okay? Because it's kind of like, you know, I, we, we kind of try and find out the mystery of everything. What if it's not a mystery to be solved? What if everything is just a question to discover what is true for you? Okay, thank you, Owen. Always ask what is true for me. Always, always, always. So that's how I discovered this life between life work because um, I was really interested in so many things growing up and I've been told so many things and I could see spirits and I could speak to them and they would visit me and there were some unpleasant experiences and some really amazing experiences. So I kept searching for more and more and more and more and more. And um, I used to do readings and all of those amazing things that we one does when you start on this amazing journey. And um, when I discovered Life Between Lives, it really made so much more sense to me than any, any religious path could ever explain to me. Um, I was able to tap into that energy straight away and receive information. Some of which I don't even talk about because it's, you know, people will find it really weird and strange and that it's just not available right now. And um, yes, maybe I'm the only one, but I also know that you know some stuff. You all know some stuff that you don't want to talk about because you will be either judged for it or made wrong for it. And that's the thing. It's like, I know that getting that sense of being in between lives truly creates a different possibility for you and for your life. It's the willingness to look at everything that you've dumped onto yourself um, that either puts you in, in um, a reactive place or a defend, defending place or um, a right or wrong place or um, being for or against something. So what if we didn't have to have any of those things, not being for or against anything, not having to react to anything, not having to make anything or anyone else wrong or right. What if we had total allowance for everyone and everything that they choose, what would that create in the world? And 
when you can truly get that sense of this is me, I'm an infinite being. I, and as an infinite being, I can know, be, perceive and receive everything. And from here and with this body, body, what can we create together? Body, what can we be together today that we haven't considered? Because it is, it's your being and your body. You and your being create this life. And your body requires different things than you do. Your body likes to run, walk, eat food, have sex, all those amazing, beautiful things in life. Your being is infinite. It doesn't need to eat. <laughs> so we kind of get confused between the two. And a lot of us who go onto this path of trying to discover more, we tend to only you know, focus on the, um, the energy part of ourselves. And we forget about our body. And we kind of ignore our body. And we're really quite abusive to our bodies by not asking it what it would like. And we put all these projections on it. So having this amazing um, communion with you and your body, your being and your body allows there to be so many more things available, gives you so many more choices. I hope you can see that. <laughs> I'm wishing you can see that, that um, just having that awareness can actually open up a different possibility for you in your future. And um, when you make a different choice, it goes beyond any other thought, feeling, emotion, or anything that's been holding you back. When you really choose something different, it allows other people to choose something different too. It's kind of like each of us turning on a switch. It just starts turning on lots of switches and this amazing lightness starts to show up. So thank you. Any more questions? Um, you said we we weren't we not here to learn lessons. Yep. So what is the reason why maybe in this lifetime maybe you have have a problem that you've had in a lot of the other lifetimes? Why um, why is that repeated? Is it not to to fix something, or is that not a lesson, or exactly why why is that? Why is That's it repeated? Okay, so. What if you choose to repeat it every time by believing you have to fix it? What if that experience was just, oh, well, okay, I have that experience. What else can I choose beyond this? It's about asking different questions. Because if we go around saying to ourselves all the time, oh, I have to fix this, what will show up in your life? The same problem. So if we look at everything we've defined as a problem to fix or as a problem to solve or something we have to learn. So um, it becomes this, this heavy, heavy, you know, kind of lugging a big bag on your back wherever you go, then that is what will show up in your life. But if you go, okay, I'm so done with lugging this bag on my back, what else can I choose? And poops, something else becomes available. So if we only see, and that's the thing, it's like, there are so many thought processes um, or concepts that tell us that we have to learn stuff. So then we start looking at in our lives where all the mistakes we've made and what happens then. So whatever you focus on becomes your reality. So the less you focus on that, the more possibilities become available to you and the more choices you have to change something. So what if you could actually well, not just only listen to, but like everybody, everything I'm saying is for everyone. It's really asking a different question. Instead of going, you know, what do I have to learn here? Ask what else is possible that I haven't considered here? And what can I be to change this? Body, what can you and I be here to change this? And there are so many amazing questions you could ask. And this is all about when you, the question changes the energy of everything. The minute you decide to ask a question, that's the minute something can change for you. Even if you've been repeating the same pattern over and over and over and over and over again. It's a choice. I know, I know nobody wants to hear that, but it is a choice. If you're seeing a pattern in your life and it's repeating and repeating and repeating, there is something, some way, somehow, maybe it's something you're not even seeing, 
that you're not even cognitively aware of that you're choosing that's creating that same thing. The question to ask is, what can I be and choose here that I've never considered to be and choose before that could change this? And watch how the energy of that changes and see how something different starts to show up for you. Pretty cool. It's about living in the question and uh, being in between lives is all about the question. Asking questions. Okay, so that was fun. What was that about? What else could I, would I like to add to my life? And what body could I choose now to have even more fun than the one before? And there's so much more, guys. I know this is just a quick introduction to this. There is so much more information available. This is just the little taster <laughs> of what is possible. Any more questions? Hi, Suki. Yes. Stefan, what do you know about that? What if it goes beyond time and space? So one of the one of the things that uh, limit us is this. This, um, sense of being in a finite reality, which is this world. Finite reality is everything takes time. It's like how long something takes to be created, how much time and space it, you need, um, how long does it take to create something, um, you know, what are the steps you're going to have to do and be and take as, a, as an infinite, looking at it from an infinite place, it's anything is possible beyond time, space, reality you know it's like think about a moment in your life where someone told you it's going to be take so long to do something and you just went and did it in five minutes that's when you went beyond this reality that is going beyond time and space and linearity and form and structure Can we become trapped in another time, life in the present? Thank you, Stefan. Pleasure. You can, you can, not from a, there's a, like a yes and a no to that question, um, Suki. So I would require more information because if I, if I give you information to that question, it's really just going by hearsay, you know, it's like, what is your question about that directly? Do you have, have you had an experience about that? Thank you, Priscilla. It's a pleasure. Like for most of my life, I was, I've always thought that I had to learn something and I kept looking for what it is I have to learn. So um, I kept, you know, tripping over things, <laughs> tripping over things in my life <laughs> and landing on my head. <laughs> Not literally, but yeah. And it's, there's something truly else available. It's, there's something else possible. Okay, so when a client comes to me with a trauma, not from this life, yes, then we look at it and we change it. We ask questions and we change it. We look at the energy of everything. Even if it's something physical. And um, sometimes it's not necessary to go back and relive a trauma. Asking for it to change changes it. It's awesome. That's, thank you, Suki, for making it a little bit more clear. It's a pleasure. Um, and something like that, Suki, that I can do online. You don't have to be physically with me in a room to do that. So um, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff that can be changed um, with, with the right questions and, and the right facilitation. Um, and also, you know, um, if, if you don't have a point of view of how something's gonna change, if you know that it can change, it can change. If you've decided that this one thing can only change if this and this and this and this happens or this and this and this occurs, then uh, it kind of limits the infinite possibilities of how that can change. 
So we really look at that um, in, in sessions that have to do with physical um, body issues or possibilities, because everything is a possibility. There's never problems, there's only possibilities. Like what else is possible? If you had to ask what else is possible with every single problem that you have, then um, yeah, awesome. Thanks, Tracy. And I think we're kind of done. Does anybody have any more questions? If you don't, if you have one or two more questions, I can, I can answer. If not, then I think we're done for the day. And thank you so much. You guys have been amazing and it's been an awesome energy on the call. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much.